everyone. This is Shravanti, working as assistant professor of chemistry in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today my topic is primary batteries. So in this topic, I'm going to discuss what is battery, how many types of batteries, classification of batteries, and what is dry cell, Leclanche cell, how can we construct lithium battery. So these are the topics today I'm going to discuss. So in this topic batteries. So what is the meaning of battery? So battery is a device in which two or more electrochemical cells connected in a series is called battery. So electrochemical cell means which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. So battery is a device in which two or more electrochemical cells connected in a series is called battery. So electrochemical cell means which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. So two or more electrochemical cells, that means each cell it consists of one anode and another one is cathode. So each cell it consists of one anode and cathode. So two or more electrochemical cells connected in a series, that means it can uh, it is combination of number of two or more anodes and two or more cathodes. So here which converts chemical energy into electrical energy is called battery. It is a direct source of power, it is a source of direct electrical current, constant voltage and main advantage is it is easily transport, it is easily transport and it should provide power for long period and these batteries are classified into two categories depending on their rechargeable capabilities. So these batteries are classified into two types, primary battery and secondary battery. So primary battery, primary battery means the cell reactions are reversible, not reversible. To use and throw batteries simply we says use and throw batteries. Those, so the cell reactions are not reversible are called primary batteries. The once reactant converts to the products, there is no change. It becomes dead. The type of batteries are called primary batteries. So here, once the reactant converts to the product, there is no electricity produced. That means it becomes dead. So these primary cells cannot be recharged or reused. They're not rechargeable batteries are called primary batteries. Best examples, dry cell or Leclanche cell, alkaline battery and lithium battery. So these primary batteries are mainly used in torches, radios and transistors. So battery means battery is a device and which in which two or more electrochemical cells connected in a series is called battery. It is a direct uh, source of power and easily we can transport. So the batteries are classified into two types based on their rechargeable capabilities. So these are classified into two categories. One is primary batteries and the other one is secondary battery. So primary batteries means these are not rechargeable batteries. Just use and throw batteries are called primary batteries. So once the reactant converts to the product, then it becomes dead. So best example, dry cell or Leclanche cell, lithium battery and also Alkaline battery is the best example of primary battery and these batteries are used in torches, radios and transistors. Now what is the meaning of secondary batteries? The cell reactions are reversible. To be these batteries are we can use number of cycles through charging and discharging. So here the cell reactions can be reversed by passing electricity to the opposite direction. So here the secondary batteries may be used through large number of cycles just now we discussed already so through the charging and discharging best example of secondary batteries are lead acid storage battery nickel cadmium battery and lithium ion battery so lithium batteries are the best example of primary battery in that battery lithium access anode but here lithium ion battery it is a secondary battery. It is the best example of secondary battery. And in this lithium ion battery, lithium acts as cathode. But in lithium battery, lithium acts as anode. That is the main difference between lithium and lithium ion battery. And these cells are used in cars, trains, motors, simply this is automobiles, and also used in power stations, laboratories, hospitals. So many of us are using secondary 
batteries. Now let's discuss what is the difference between primary batteries and secondary batteries. Here, primary battery, the cell reactions are reversible, not reversible or irreversible. But here in the secondary battery, the cell reactions are reversible and must be discarded after use. Once we are using this battery, it becomes dead, so it can be dis discarded. But here may be recharged. Under the secondary batteries are rechargeable batteries. So we are using so many number of cycles through charging and discharging. So these charge uh, secondary batteries are maybe recharged. And third one, it have relatively short shelf life. So once we are using, we cannot rechargeable, just use and throw batteries. So it is having less life, short life period. But in this uh, secondary battery, it is having long shell life and this functions only as galvanic cells in this primary battery it follows galvanic cells galvanic cells means it is also called as electrochemical cells which converts chemical energy into electrical energy so it follows mainly the function of galvanic cell which converts chemical energy into electrical energy but in the secondary battery it follows the functions both the galvanic cells and electrolytic cell so galvanic cell, it is also called as voltaic cell or electrochemical cell. Electrochemical cell means which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. So it follows electrochemical cell and also it follows electrolytic cell concept also. So electrolytic cell means which converts electrical energy into chemical energy. So in the secondary battery, it follows functions both electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell. But in this primary battery, it follows only electrochemical cell or galvanic cell. And next, they cannot be used in storage devices. Why? Because it, uh, why? It, uh, it is uh, having only short life period. And once we are using, we cannot rechargeable. So that's why we cannot store it in storage devices long period. But here, in the secondary battery, they can be used as energy storage devices, that means uh, uh, solar devices, thermal devices, thermal energy, it converted into electrical energy. And it they cannot be recharged. Already we know that primary batteries just use and throw batteries. So these cell reactions are not reversible. So we cannot be recharged. But in the secondary battery, they can be recharged. Best example of primary batteries, dry cell or lignan cell, alkaline battery, and one more example is lithium battery. In this example, of secondary batteries are lead acid storage battery or lead storage battery, nickel cadmium battery, and one more example is lithium ion battery. So these are the difference between primary battery and secondary batteries. So now let's discuss primary batteries. So primary batteries means the cell reactions are not reversible. So once reactant converts to a product, there is, uh, that means it becomes dead. It's called primary batteries. So best example is dry cell or Leclanche cell. So how to construct this dry cell? So it consists of, it consists of cylindrical zinc container. So it acts as anode. It consists of cylindrical zinc container, which acts, which acts as anode and this zinc cylinder is filled with an electrolyte it consisting of ammonium chloride zinc chloride and manganese oxide so this uh, zinc container which acts as uh, anode it is filled with electrolyte the combination is ammonium chloride zinc chloride and a manganese oxide so make it paste by using starch for water starch and water so next carbon rod it uh, it acts as cathode it is immersed in between center of the electrolyte in this zinc cylinder the center of the zinc cylinder in the electrolyte and this zinc cylinder has an outer insulation of cardboard case this zinc cylinder has an outer insulation of cardboard case so here this uh, primary battery dry cell and electrolyte cell it consists of this is the zinc cylinder so this is a zinc cylinder. It is uh, filled with electrolyte. That is the combination is zinc chloride, ammonium chloride, 
and MnO2. So make it paste by using starch and water. So this zinc cylinder acts as anode. It is filled with electrolyte that is zinc chloride, ammonium chloride, and manganese oxide. Make it paste by using starch and water. And this carbon dioxide or graphite acts as cathode. Acts as cathode. It is dipped or immersed in between center of the electrolyte. It acts as a cathode. And it totally covered with carbon. This is carbon. So it is prevents from any leakage while you are using uh, this battery. It prevents from any leakages. Next, in this dry cell or clenched battery, here zinc acts as anode, cathode is carbon rod or graphite, and electrolyte is ammonium chloride, zinc chloride, and manganese oxide. It acts as an electrolyte and electrode potential value or EMF of this battery is 1.5 volts. Electrode potential of this battery is 1.5 volts. So working function, what are the reactions takes place here during working? So that means here this is a primary battery, so only discharging reactions are takes place. There is no charging but because the cell reactions are not reversible. So cell reactions takes place in the cell are at anode. So already we know that zinc acts as anode, graphite acts as cathode. So at anodic area, zinc undergoes oxidation, then gives zinc metal ions and loss of two electrons. Why? Because at anodic area, oxidation reactions takes place. Oxidation means loss of electrons. So this is called oxidation. So oxidation reactions takes place at anodic area. So in this uh, dry cell or like clenched battery, zinc acts as anode. So zinc undergoes oxidation, then gives zinc to metal ions and loss of two electrons. So at cathodic area, reduction reactions takes place. Reduction means gain of electrons. Gain of electrons. It is a reduction reaction. So at cathodic area, manganese oxide from the electrolyte. It involves manganese oxide. So used as electrolyte is zinc chloride, ammonium chloride and manganese oxide. So at cathodic area, first manganese oxide involves and it reacts with water and gain of electrons at cathodic area because it is a reduction reaction. So it forms Mn2O3 and 2OH- minus ions. So overall net reaction in this battery is zinc plus 2MnO2 plus H2O. Used as Zn plus 2 and it forms Mn2O3 and form 2OH- minus ions. This is the overall reaction in this Leclanchy cell. So here the resulting OH- minus ions react with ammonium chloride. In the electrolyte, generally we are using ammonium chloride, zinc chloride and manganese oxide. So at cathodic area, manganese oxide involved that produces OH- minus ions. This OH- minus ions immediately reacts with ammonium chloride to produce ammonia. To produce ammonia. But it is uh, not liberated as gas. But immediately it is combined with zinc and chloride ions. So when the resulting OH- minus ions reacts with ammonium chloride from the electrolyte to produce ammonium gas which is not liberated as gas. It produces ammonia which is not liberated as gas but immediately combines with zinc and chloride ions and form a complex with zinc ammonium chloride complex. Diamond dichloro zinc complex is formed finally. So here the resulting OH- minus ions reacts with ammonium chloride from the electrolyte then produces ammonia it is not liberated ammonium gas but it is immediately reacts with zinc and chloride ion then forms diamine dichloro zinc complex is formed and the voltage of Leclanchy cell is about 1.5 volts. What are the advantages of Leclanchy battery or Leclanchy cell? So here the cell have voltage ranging from 1.25 volts to 1.50 volts. The E cell value is 1.25 to 1.5 volts. And these batteries are used in torches, radios, transistors, hearing aids, pacemakers and watches. And this price is very low. 
But what is the disadvantage of this dry cell or Leclanche battery? This battery is not have long life because here electrolyte we are using ammonium chloride, zinc chloride and manganese oxide. So this ammonium chloride is corrodes the zinc container when we are using or when the cell is not using. Okay, so that's a, this is the main drawback of dry cell. So second example of this primary battery is alkaline battery. It is an improved form of dry cell, uh, like Lange's cell. So, but what is the difference between dry cell and alkaline battery? Here we are using KOH used as an electrolyte instead of ammonium chloride because an ammonium chloride corrodes the zinc container in this Leclanche battery. That's why it produces a short life period. It corrodes the zinc container while we are using or if we are not using. So instead of that, we are using KOH in the place of ammonium chloride. So in this alkaline battery, it is an improved form of dry cell. The electrolyte is basic KOH paste. So which eliminates buildup of gases and maintains the electrode. So this is an improved form of the dry cell. So in this alkaline battery, the powdered zinc is mixed with KOH and MnO2 to get a gel. So here, same thing, carbon rod access cathode. So in dry cell also same thing, but what is the difference between electrolyte, ammonium chloride? We, in this alkaline battery, we are using KOH instead of ammonium chloride. That is the difference remaining uh, construction, working function, advantage all, all are similar to dry cell. So in this alkaline battery, we are using electrolyte is KOH, MnO2 and zinc chloride used as a make it paste by using starch or water. And it containing say zinc container and it is filled with electrolyte is KOH, MnO2 and zinc chloride and carbon rod placed in between center of this uh, cylinder zinc body or placed in center of the electrolyte. So what are the reactions takes place in this? alkaline battery while we are using the discharging process. So it anode, zinc undergoes oxidation, then gives zinc metal ions and loss of two electrons. So zinc, is, zinc metal ions reacts with OH minus ions from the electrolyte then form zinc hydroxide and loss of two electrons. So this is the anodic reaction. At cathodic area, MnO2 involves, it is reacts with water and gain of Two electrons reaction reactions takes place at cathodic area then it forms Mn2O3 plus 2OH minus ions so overall reaction in this alkaline battery is zinc plus 2MnO2 plus H2O gives rise zinc hydroxide and Mn2O3 this is a working function in this alkaline battery and voltage or EMF of the cell is 1.5 volts no advantages of alkaline battery. Here, there is no voltage drop, longer shell life than dry cell because of alkaline electrolyte. Because of only KOH we are using instead of ammonium chloride. That is the main advantage of uh, this alkaline battery. So that there is no voltage drop, longer uh, longer shell life compared to dry cell or Leclanche cell. But what is the disadvantage is there is more expensive than, than common dry cell. This is the main disadvantage of alkaline battery. And uses same as for dry cell. That means it is used in uh, torches, radios, transistors, and hearing aids, face makers, watches, etc. So this uh, alkaline battery is the best example of primary battery and improved version of a dry cell. And third important example of primary battery is lithium battery. Here lithium battery is the best example of primary cell or primary battery. Here lithium metal acts as anode. This metal is called as lithium battery. Here in this lithium acts as anode. So in this battery it has following three components. Anode is the lithium metal. Cathode is the metal oxide or sulfide. So here generally we are using titanium sulfide acts as the cathode. Metal oxide or metal sulfide used as cathode. And electrolyte is polymer gel. Electrolyte is polymer 
gel. So how to construct this lithium battery? So this lithium battery consists of lithium access anode and metal oxide, any metal oxide and metal sulfide taken as uh, cathode. But in this lithium battery, we are taking titanium sulfide access cathode. So this lithium battery consists of lithium anode and titanium sulfide access cathode. So solid electrolyte generally used as polymer gel, used as an electrolyte. It is packed in between the electrolytes. For example, here, uh, this is a lithium battery here. So this is anode, here lithium access anode and this one is access cathode. So here we are using titanium sulfide used as a cathode. In between this, we are filling polymer gel used as a electrolyte. So this lithium battery consists of lithium access anode, titanium sulfide access cathode. In between these two electrodes, we are filling polymer gel. It is used as a electrolyte. So this electrolyte allows the lithium ions from anode to cathode, cathode to anode. It allows the lithium ions not that of electrons electrons move to the external circuit only so this electrolyte permits the passage of ions but not that of electrons it allows the lithium ions from anode to cathode so working function it is a primary battery so here only discharging is possible there is not possible charging because the cell reactions are not reversible so during working that means discharging when the anode is connected to cathode, so that means lithium ions move from, so when we connected anode to cathode, so lithium ions move from anode to cathode. So the anode is here, element in lithium, taxes as anode, which is the source of lithium ions and electrons. It is a source of lithium ions and electrons. So the cathode is a material capable of receiving the lithium ions and electrons. So lithium during discharging process, the working function, lithium ions move from anode to cathode through the polymer gel. The electrolyte which allows the lithium ions and this lithium ions electrons uh, compensate cathodic area. So the, at anodic area, so already we know that in this battery anode is lithium metal and cathode is any metal oxide or metal sulfide used as a cathode in this, but in this battery we are taking titanium sulfide used as a cathode. And electrolyte is polymer gel. It is packed in between these two electrodes. Uh, it allows the lithium ions from anode to cathode. So at anodic area, lithium undergoes oxidation. So it uh, gives lithium metal ions and loss of electrons. This is an oxidation reaction at anodic area. So at cathodic area, titanium sulfide acts as cathode. So usually cathodic area reduction reactions takes place. Reduction means gain of electrons. So titanium sulfide gain of electrons then form titanium sulfate. So overall reaction in this lithium battery, lithium is titanium sulfide, both are solids only. And in this battery, main advantage is all are we are using solids. So it gives lithium metal ions and titanium sulfide. It forms lithium titanium sulfide. So it is formed in this lithium battery. <clears throat> so what are the advantages of lithium battery? So here the cell is having high voltage. It voltage is really 3 volts. It produces high voltage, so that is 3 volts. Since, uh, since here lithium is having main advantage, it is available in different different sizes and shapes and lightweight mainly. It is lightweight of metal to only 7 grams or 1 mole material is it is required of 1 mole of electrons. And lithium has most negative electrode potential value. It is in electrochemical series, it is higher position and it is having high oxidation potential value. So here it is having most 
water that means higher negative high oxygen potential value so it generates high voltage than other type of batteries so electrochemical series it is present high higher position in the series and it is having high voltage value minus 3.0 volts in electrochemical series so that's why it produces high voltage than other batteries this is the main advantages of lithium battery advantage of lithium battery since all the constituents of the batteries are solids just now we discussed we are using lithium access anode titanium sulfide access cathode polymer gel used as a electrolyte so in this battery all we are using components are solids only so there is no leakage problem so since all the constituents of the lithium battery are solids so there is no risk of leakage from the battery and this battery can be made in a variety of sizes and shapes for example uh, button size lithium battery it is used in laptops and cameras so it is available in different different variety of sizes and shapes these are the main advantages of lithium battery it produces high voltage than other batteries its voltage is nearly 3 volts and it is having high oxidation potential than other batteries and in this battery construction purpose we are using all the components are solids so there is no leakage problems and it is available in different sizes and shapes these are the main advantages of lithium battery but what is the disadvantage of lithium battery it is more expensive than other batteries these are the main, this is the main drawback of lithium battery and uses it is used in calculators laptops cameras watches mobile phones so many ways we are using this battery why because uh, because it is having high potential high voltage and it is available in different different sizes so it is most preferable batteries so thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates